UI path. So today I'm going to explain about UI path components and then we'll discuss about basics of what are the what are the different activities we are having and how we can create a workflow. So understand anything that we create in UI path it's called workflow. Okay. And almost everything is going to be covered with the help of example. There is no theory. Okay. There is no theory. Everything is going to help. I'm going to cover with the help of examples. Make sense? The first thing you have to do is here. You can see there are four different templates available. Using that, you can create a workflow. First is blank, which will give you an empty, empty workspace. Second is a simple flowchart diagram. So that what it's going to do is, it's going to give you a basic flowchart to understand how it looks. Then agent assisted. If you want to create an attended board, board this is the template. So you will get pretty small structure using that you can create and we are going to use one by one and transactional business process if you want to create state machine diagram then we have to use this now this is the complex one and frankly speaking till date we have not used this in any of our process simple flowchart is enough but transactional business process we will see couple of examples Okay. The next thing is let's start with a blank. So I'll say I'll give a name. Showing demo. You can change the location. You can give a description. It's always good to have a description. Remember. Say Behind it is creating a project for you in that it is going to have a XAML file. Remember, it is created based on WPF, so it supports XAML file. Okay, now let's try to understand first project structure, studio structure, and then we will go ahead and create some workflows. Now, on the left hand side, what you are seeing it's called activities window. Okay. Here you will have all the activities. Now, by default in UI path, you will not have all the activities installed. You have to add packages. So when you click this button, it will give you a package window. From the package window, you can add extra activities. Okay, so you will have installed, available and update. You can select auto update. So whenever a new update will come, automatically it will be pushed to your studio. Right now we are interested in available. Now, can you see there are multiple activities which are not there. So we'll talk about this whenever there will be a requirement I'll be coming here and installing it. For example, I want to work with PDF. So I need to install this. Simply say install and these activities will be added here. So this way you can add all the activities or the activities which is required for you. Now you have to go and search the activities. The best way is you simply type here and use it. Now on top of that you can say add to favorites. So what will happen and remove this search by 
pressing this close button it will be added to your favorite so what will happen you need not to go and search every time you can simply drag and drop the next thing is project here also you are having same buttons if you say it will give you the disk location of your folder okay right now i am having a main.json right we will use this main.xaml remember when you run this project from orchestrator or from robot the first page of the first workflow it will pick is the main workflow and from the main workflow you can call different workflows we'll see how to do that but understand this main workflow is required when you are running from studio you can run any xaml file any workflow but when you run from orchestrator or from robo you need mail.xaml this is for refresh this is for remove unused screenshot what is the screenshot we'll see and see this is one of the best thing available in ui path which i haven't seen in other tools when you click this tfs svn you can configure your workflow with SVN or Team Foundation Server. What will happen? Now, multiple people can work in a single project. That means you can, you can integrate source control here. So, in the advanced part, I'm going to show you this also. Okay. Next, right hand section is the properties, which is very important. If you are selecting any workflow, the workflow related so activities, the activity related setting will come here. Okay, all the changes you can you have to make here. The next window is the outline window. We basically hardly use this outline window, but to understand what is the structure of your sample. Okay, I'm deleting this. Now, in down, we are having an output. This is a very important window. If you want to test, if you want to debug, if you want to see the execution, all these messages will come here. Any error, any exception, everything you will see here. Next is variables. If you want to declare a variable, you have to use this window. If you need to declare arguments, Arguments are different. See, when you want to pass the data from one workflow to another workflow, you need a like function, you need an argument. When you want to pass the parameter among multiple workflow, it's an argument. If it is just local variable, variable. And the good thing is import. Can you see all the .NET methods are there? These all are the .NET. Now, if you want to import some package, you can do, do that from here. You can see all the .NET packages are listed here. You can pick anyone and include. Got it everyone? Any doubt as of now? Please. Any doubt? Yes, no. Okay. So, Next thing is toolbar. The first thing is the start that we see at the beginning. Then, see, this is the design where we have new if you want to create a new XAML file, save if you want to save the XAML file for running the application. Cut, copy, paste is fine. These all the buttons we will see later point of time. Okay. Then we have execute for running, stopping, debugging. Okay, remaining all is kind of validate, breakpoints, step in, step out like F10, F11 will do. This option we'll talk later. Setup also we'll see later. Point of 